The first week of NFL free agency is almost complete, which means it's time for a new Chiefs mock draft as they have some different needs after this week of moves. We appreciate you watching here on the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Jay Sanders. And well, I'm going to say this. It was a pleasant surprise this week in NFL free agency. And hopefully the draft continues the positive notion. And well, that three-peat will come easier rather than harder like the last year we had to deal with. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button because the draft coming up means a lot more coverage and a lot more videos here on the Chiefs Report. You want draft games. You want previews. You want to be live with us on the NFL Draft Day. Well, hit that subscribe button because we've got a lot of amazing content and fun ideas going through this channel. So I'd appreciate it if you join us right here, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. Or you can scroll down, little red subscribe button, click that. It'll turn gray and you're a part of the Chiefs support community. Let's talk about draft picks real quick because the Chiefs have acquired an extra one. So you know the picks they've had in round one, two, three, four, and then the compensatory pick they had in round five, and the Dallas pick they acquired in round five. But that round seven one, well, that's new because they just got that delivered to them over the past couple weeks. So now they are up to seven total picks. Now, I know round seven doesn't seem that big a deal, but guess where Isaiah Pacheco was picked? That's right, round seven, 11 picks before Brock Purdy. And uh, unlike Brock Purdy, Isaiah Pacheco has two Super Bowls. Get a little update here because with Marquise Brown signing to KC, that does differentiate the way that I think this draft will go just slightly. The first round should be the same. I still think the go wide receiver. But it also sounds like Legereus Sneed will stay in Kansas City. That definitely changes up my draft thought process and the way that the Chiefs will go about this. Honestly, Brett Veach has set this team up for success already. I had a hard time doing this draft, not because I was struggling to see who to pick. They don't really have a lot of needs. I got to be quite honest. But, hey, I'm going to take what I can and just bolster up everything. So if you're thinking... Well, why is he picking depth moves? Because, I don't know about you, linebacker core seems pretty good. Offensive line, defensive line, quarterback looks good. Isaiah Pacheco is great. Maybe they need a running back because Clyde Edwards-Alaire and Jerick McKinnon aren't signed yet. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Let's start with this mock draft. Get it going here. The first pick in round one, he's such a chief. Lad McConkey. Oh, I want him to be in KC because, listen here. When the Chiefs signed Marquise Brown, we knew that there was going to be a lot of differences in the way the Chiefs draft. With Marquise Brown being the pick in free agency, Lad McConkey has to be the one in the draft because this would make this wide receiver room absolutely diabolical. I mean, you think about this. If they were going to get Curtis Samuel, the potential would be, okay, let's get Xavier Worthy at pick 32. You got your speedster now. You got Marquise Brown. Go get a guy whose route running abilities are absolutely incredible. And Lad, he pretty he performed pretty well at UGA. This past year, only played in eight games, had a little bit of problems throughout the year, only had 478 yards, two touchdowns. But the year that really made him a top 32 pick in the NFL draft, that'd be 2022. 762 yards, seven touchdowns with Stetson Bennett as his QB and a national champion over the TCU Horn Frogs. He was a key part in that team. You ask, well, I want to see this wide receiver room with a minute. Oh my gosh, that looks nice. Rasheed Rice, Marquise Brown, Lad McConkey. That is an insane one, two, three punch. Considering last year, I think Rasheed Rice was the best receiver, and we didn't even really use him properly until week 10. Kadarius Tony, I doubt will be cut given you don't really save anything. Justin Watson was also an underrated piece this past year. Justin Ross still has potential, had the suspension this past year, so maybe he actually gets it going this year. And then Sky Moore. If they have Marquise Brown and Lad McConkey, they're going to put Sky in the slot, and I truly believe he will succeed in that area. I think he should have been there in general, but now they're going to be forced to put him there. I'm excited to see what he can do. Grade this potential wide receiver room for the Kansas City Chiefs because it is absolutely impeccable to me. A, B, C, D, or F. This wide receiver room really, really excites me. Get down in the comment section and let me know what you think. Let's continue on here. You heard me mention at the top of the show the running back situation. Jarek McKinnon, Clyde Edwards-Lair, still free agents, could potentially be re-signed with the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, Jonathan Brooks here. I think it's a great pick at pick two, even if McKinnon or Clyde Edwards-Lair is signed and they still have that guy. Because I think you need a third running back, and Brooks fits the bill in a lot of different places. Plus, 1,100 yards in 11 games is absolutely insane. Niner are sitting here questioning, Jace, if you didn't watch any college football this past year, how in the world did he play 11 games when the Texas Longhorns went to the CFP. 
Well, he tore his ACL in November, which is definitely a cause for concern. But here's my thought process. ACL tamper running backs could be hard, but also your running back room is just one guy right now. It's Isaiah Pacheco. So I think it's worth it to take a little bit of a risk at round two, especially if you're not going to re-sign Jarek McKinnon and Clyde edwards helaire Now, obviously, this could change in a blink of an eye if Clyde edwards helaire or Jarek McKinnon are re-signed. These two guys definitely have a chance to stay with KC. I know that they're both liked in Kansas City, that's for sure. Jarek McKinnon, though, is 31 years old. So with him, the risk is, is his age worth it, or are you going to try and get him back on a one-year deal? With Clyde edwards helaire he's 24. He was a first-round draft pick for the Chiefs out of the 2019 LSU squad. The thing with him, he has never performed to what we expected him to be. I don't know what Brett Beach's plan is. The money is kind of dwindling in some facets, and I think it honestly be a little bit more of a financial move to draft a running back at this point, especially since year three of Isaiah Pacheco. You have to expect him to take the bell cow, pack, bell cow back in full swing this upcoming year in 2024. So look out for Jonathan Brooks or maybe a couple other running backs maybe later in the round. Bucky Irving was talking to the Chiefs. Dylan Johnson could also come. So a couple of guys that could potentially be in KC after the draft. Let's go to the round three pick here for the Kansas City Chiefs. Jerrion Jones, he's a cornerback from Florida State. And the reason I'm going cornerback here at pick number, or round three rather, you have to plan for the future. You have to realize that with the Chiefs knowing that Legereus Need could be gone next year, I want somebody to fill that void, especially with Trent McDuffie going to be needing to be paid here in the next couple of years. Jerry and Jones, great season this year with FSU. Now, I'm not going to front. The ACC is not exactly the premier conference in college football, not by any long shot. But FSU did not lose a single game until the bowl game where they lost pretty much every single player on their starting 11 on offense and defense because they sat out. 90 overall PFF grade, coverage grade of 87, man coverage, he was at 90, and the passer rating, 25.3. That is legitimately insane. Again, this is not a pick for now, it's a pick for the future. It helps out if Sneed were to leave in 2025. Now, I know you can't exactly just plan for the future all the time, but with Brett Veach, knowing that your cap hit is going to be heavy in 2024, or 2025 rather, you have to make sure that this draft is good because there is a very real shot that a year from now, we're talking about why the two drafts are the reason the Chiefs could quad beat. Hopefully that's what we're talking about. But hey, for right now, go get a cornerback, especially Jerry and Jones. He looks really nice. While you're at it, go get yourself a KC polo too because uh, to quote Cullen earlier, he said, this looks like a perfect Andy Reid polo. So we're going to get this for you 40% off. The deal is not lasting much longer. That's probably the last time you see it. Go, go get it right now. Chatsports.com slash KC Polo. I'm telling you, you need to get this on your docket. So link will be in the comments in the description. It's something you can wear to church, something you can wear to work, something you can wear to a nice outing with anybody. And hey, plus, it's just a nice polo. So go check it out. Chatsports.com slash KC Polo. Link will be in the comments in the description. 40% off. Last chance to go get this. All right, let's continue on here. Cedric Gray is going to be my round four pick for the Chiefs the linebacker out of North Carolina. Now, you haven't seen a linebacker on my mock drafts over the past couple times, the first two ones. I think the reason I'm putting him here is because of the Willie Gay side. If we look at his stats at UNC, they're pretty freaking good. Eight and a half sacks, 13 pass breakups, five interceptions, over 350 tackles. He played well, played well on a defense that overall had some solid members. I mean, you talk about this UNC team with Drake May, their defense was honestly pretty solid as well. And once again, with Cedric, it's depth. It's depth. It's depth. He's a high-rated linebacker. You're going to get him in the fourth round, so not like it's a crazy pick to get him at. And we know Brett Veach loves to continue his depth. With the linebacker position, they love Jack Cochran, so he's probably going to be linebacker number four. But your starting three is Drew Tranquil, Willie Gay Jr., and Leo Chanel. Jack Cochran has been re-signed, so he'll be on the back end there, front linebacker number four but we know that they like to make sure the depth is very secure. Cedric Gray, he'd be a perfect fit to help that out. Let's go to round five with the Dallas pick that they acquired, and we finally go interior defensive line. Now, I would have gone it earlier, but the re-signings of Derek Nadi, Tershawn Wharton, and along with Mike Pinnell Jr. make me believe that they are filling up that defensive interior with guys that they already had, so the draft can be more of a depth piece. Now, Tyler Davis here in round five isn't an amazing pick. It's... Great value, though. 
what exactly it is. And honestly, past round four, that's what you're looking for. You're looking in value in each pick. 16 career sacks. He only had a half sack this past year, but he had five and a half sacks in a couple years at Clemson. So I really like what I've seen from him. Plus, the big thing, 6'2", 300, which if you think about it, for a defensive lineman, is pretty agile. And he was right next to Rook Orohoro, who was another defensive interior lineman by Clemson who was supposed to be a top, probably first two-round pick, top 64 pick. And he performed well next to him. Well, guess what? With Tyler Davis, it's not going to be Rook Orohoro to his right. It's going to be Chris Jones. I truly believe he could be a pretty good force and a great value pick at round five with that Dallas pick. Let's go to the compensatory pick that the Chiefs got in round five. And I go offensive tackle here with Javon Foster, the Mizzou product. A lot of things that I like about this pick, one, being a Mizzou guy, you fit in well, and we know the Chiefs like to get some homegrown talent. But the question here, how much do the Chiefs trust Wanya Morris? Because Donovan Smith, to me, seems all but gone, given they signed Marquise Brown, and they've already brought back Mike Pinnell Jr., Tershawn Morton, Derek Naughty. I feel like the only guy who has still a shot to return to the Chiefs on a deal is Mike Williams. And that's going to be if he decides to take less money, because the safety put on his Twitter a couple days ago, he wants to get paid. Well, maybe he doesn't get it. Maybe he decides he just wants another, another Super Bowl ring and comes back to the Kansas City Chiefs. With Wanya Morris, though, it's a lot of stuff into him. And I think that there's a lot of good things with that. But I know you probably clicked on this and you're thinking, why am I clicking on this, this video? This last pick is probably going to be the thing that you're going to be surprised about. So if you're ready, you may want to sit down for this one. Pick seven, round seven, to Louis. Tagovailoa, the QB from Maryland, Tua's brother. You're thinking, Jace, what in the world are you doing? You didn't have this round seven pick literally three weeks ago. And I don't think Blaine Gabbert is going to come back. So here's the thing. You don't have too much money to spend. I don't think you want to pay for Blaine Gabbert. If Patrick Mahomes gets hurt, I got to be honest. I'm throwing in the towel anyway. Hopefully it doesn't happen. And with the offensive line as solid as it has been, it shouldn't happen. Plus, we've also seen Patrick Holmes play through injury. So you may as well just draft somebody in the seventh round who you're going to pay dirt to be your backup quarterback and probably won't play much besides in garbage talk. And uh, Tului actually performed pretty well in college. Dude had over 11,000 yards. He had three 3,000-yard seasons at Maryland. His completion percentage was all right. His average was okay. His touchdowns, though, 77 to 37. Not a bad TD to INT ratio. And a lot of things about Tului really surprised me in the way it goes. Now, you have Chris Oladukin, who could potentially be your backup quarterback, and maybe they just do that. But why not take a chance? I mean, you're not going to ever start him. He's not going to be a starter in this league ever. But, hey, pick him in round seven. Worst comes to worst, he sits on the bench the rest of the year. And if he stinks when he comes in, you have Chris Oladukin. So that's all I'll say. All right, let's go through my draft here real quick. Lad McConkey at round one, pick 32. Jonathan Brooks, round two, pick 64. Jerrion Jones at round three, pick 95. The cornerback, round four, pick 132. Cedric Gray, the linebacker. That's the only one that PFF gave me a C on, by the way. PFF, you're on thin ice. Round five, pick 159. The defensive interior lineman, Tyler Davis. Round five, pick 173. Javon Foster. And then, obviously, as you just saw, round seven, two, 52. Louis Tungavailoa gets a B minus. I've got a bunch of A's up there. A for McConkey, A for Davis, A for Javon Foster. I want to know, though, if you look at this draft, what's your confidence level if the Chiefs got these guys? Scale it from 1 to 10, a confidence level in this draft. Do you like it? Do you not like it? 1, you hate it. 10, you love it. Let me know in the comment section down below. I really like this one. I think after the free agency period is done, this fits really well with a lot of different situations. Plus, we all know that Chris Jones is back, and it seems as though Legereus Sneed will stay with the Chiefs. I like a lot of these picks. Let me know how you feel. One, you don't like it. Ten, you're pretty confident in this. Hit that subscribe button, guys. We're putting out content like crazy here on the Chiefs. We had four videos out just a couple days ago. And, well, news is not going to stop. Just expect more and more and more. So hit that sub button because you'll lock in the best breaking news and, honestly, all news here on the Chiefs Report. So, as always, Chiefs Kingdom, we will see you next time. But for now, peace out.